I'm John Diaz. I'm a staff technical marketing architect, cloud management business unit at VMware. And in this demonstration, we're going to talk about how you can use vRealize operations to manage configurations, uh, including compliance for uh, vSphere security hardening, as well as any uh, regulatory compliance issues or even your own uh, compliance uh, or configuration policies that you want to set in your environment. If I go to the compliance link on the Manage Configuration card, uh, I get a page here. It's got, uh, Jim, a lot of white space. You might appreciate this. Um, but uh, what it gives me is a kind of a bird's eye view about uh, how my environment is uh, adhering or not adhering to various standards that I'd like to enforce. Now, out of the box, we give you uh, the ability to turn on the vSphere security configuration guide so you can start seeing, according to what we consider our best practices, whether or not your host VMs, uh, networks, uh, virtual networks, storage, et cetera, are complying with those standards. So you get a score here. It tells you what's compliant, what's not compliant. You can also download, optionally, uh, security standards for things like ISO, PCI, DISA, the list goes on and on, uh, HIPAA, FISMA. We uh, provide those for you optionally. You can download those very easily, install them, and apply them to your environment. Same type of thing. We have basically a list of configuration items that we check for uh, elements or objects within your vSphere environment, and we let you know whether or not you're in compliance. Now, one of the things that customers told us, we've had this for uh, you know, a little while now, but one of the things that customers told us was, uh, you know, it's, it's great that you do this, but my audit team, my security team, the only thing they ever ask me about is ESXi host configuration. So honestly, that's the only thing I'm concerned about. So can I use this to only alert when I have a host misconfiguration issue because if a host isn't configured right uh, correctly, uh, then it can create other problems uh, throughout the infrastructure that would impact basically everything. So the host is kind of the nexus when it comes to configuration. Uh, you think about something like NTP. If NTP is misconfigured and not running on a host, that can create a lot of issues in the environment that mask themselves as other things, like all of a sudden login access gets denied or certificates stop working and that type of thing very difficult to troubleshoot. So yeah, you can do that. Uh, so you can say host only compliance template. And this could be unique to your organization. You can create multiple of these if you want. Uh, and then you can come in and based on the different management or the different content packs that we provide for compliance, you can pick and choose the ones that you'd like to enforce with that particular policy template. So uh, I'll just select everything that has to do, every alert basically, that is related to an ESXi host. And now I've got a new policy that checks against all the compliance templates that I've installed for just the host. Now, you'll notice that what I'm selecting here are uh, actually alerts, alert definitions. Okay, so that's how we raise to, to your attention that something is not configured the way it should be in the environment. Uh, you can also create your own configuration alerts and then add these to the policy. So if you have some uh, internal standards or policies for, you know, how you want ESXi host builds uh, to go, for example, you can put those in here and get reports on whether or not uh, you're in compliance even with your own internal standards. I click finish, boom, I've got a um, host only compliance uh, template. I'm only focused on host systems here, uh, so it's much easier for me to concentrate on what is important to me and to uh, the people that I need to get information to. Now, I still have a lot of alerts here uh, for my host configuration. Um, this is not fun to deal with, right? 26 alerts for configuration. That means I've got to slog through a lot of host configurations, figure out what's wrong. And in fact, if you look at uh, one of these alerts, what you'll notice is the alert has a lot of symptoms, 
And this is this area down here with all the yellow triangles with the exclamation. So all these symptoms indicate the specific configuration item that we're telling you is not correct per some template. And in this case, it's the vSphere security configuration guide. So I see things like ESXi shell. I see things like NTP is not configured. I see things like uh, network BPDU. Okay, gosh, for, you know, first of all, I don't know where to go set this stuff. I don't know what the recommended setting is. Uh, I, you know, it, I've got to do it across multiple hosts, maybe hundreds uh, of hosts uh, that I need to do this. Somebody, I'm gonna have to give it to somebody at the knock. Maybe they're really good at this. Maybe they're new. Maybe they make mistakes and make things worse. This is the perfect time to think about automating a repetitive task, right? This fits all the requirements for like why you would want to automate something. So if you install the Realize Orchestrator Management Pack 3.0, which we released at the same time as 7.5 of vRealize Operations, will give you that ability to automate. When you click this Run Action button, uh, and then there'll be a next down there or finish to, to launch it. It basically says, okay, for this host, I'll go out and fix all of the alert symptoms that were listed for ESXi shell timeouts and NTP configuration and BPDU filters and et cetera. And then I'll email you a report telling you whether or not we were successful in, in doing that and in addressing those. Further, you can configure that workflow to say, I don't really necessarily care about, or I don't want you touching things like that deal with firewall settings or user account settings. We ha you know, we're not comfortable automating that. NTP settings, absolutely, do that all day. And uh, so the report will come back and say, these are the problems that we found, these are the ones that you let us fix and we fixed them, these are the ones that you still need to go manually fix yourself, okay? And the nice thing is, is that you saw I clicked the, the button uh, here to run the action, but I don't even have to do that. Once the alert comes up, then the action can run, be run automatically, uh, and that configuration would be corrected, remediated, uh, and then you would get the, the report uh, based on that. Zero. So again, that's a combination with the orchestrator management pack. Once you install it, it's no additional cost uh, to, to install it. Yes. I love your example about NTP and BPDU actually. Is there a way to, again, sort of on a global holistic view, kind of all of a sudden go, hey, you know what, we just got NTP from a bunch of different servers, or mm -hmm. we got, you know, I mean, and that way you can immediately sort of say, hey, you know what, as instead of it has, as those complaints trickle in, right. as different as they go, oh, well, this doesn't happen on this server, because you're 100% correct, NTP issues cause weird and crazy things and they never present at the same time. Yeah. If there's a way to kind of all of a sudden pop up a little alert and say, hey, you know what, every every server just had an NTP issue, then at that point, you know, it's, hey, call the guy in the knock. I'm the one that picks up the phone and you go, hey, got an NTP issue? And I go, oh, crap, let me talk to the NTP guy. <laughs> and so, so I yell over my cubicle wall and I go, hey, Mike, what's going on with NTP? And so that way we can at least, by giving us more information yep. as a network guy, you know, we can go, oh, you know, this is a problem that we're causing and we can correct it faster. Yep. Yeah, so if you wanted to look at that, you wanted an, an indication of that problem specifically and the number of hosts that were in, indicated by that. Yeah, yep. you, could, you, could, you could create the alert definition okay. to trigger just on that symptom uh, and then we give you, like at the cluster level, it would tell you how many hosts, for example, have NTP issues. So it's absolutely doable. Um, and then to automate that is doable as well. If okay. you just wanted to automate only the, in fact, that's how this all kind of started off. Oh. When we introduced, first introduced this integration, we didn't have, like, we had a few examples of actions that you could add in addition to, you know, what we provide with the Python framework. But we just said, go create some more, you know, oh. you, can, you can do this yourself. And people were contacting us and going, well, you know, I have this problem or that problem, do you have a workflow for that? And the biggest one was NTP configuration uh, and also just various ESXi host configurations. Those seem to be like the most vexing things to deal with that people are like, I, if I could automate that and nothing else, <laughs> that would cut out 90% of my work. Um, 
So we added that. So okay. we, we, we added initially when I started off with the example, I used to just show fixing NTP, but then we added all the other components in there. So you could, okay. you could just configure this and say, only fix NTP, here's the NTP servers I want. And it'll not only like add the NTP servers, it'll make sure that this, the service is set to start with the host, uh, that the firewall ports are open. It does the whole schmeal, nice. right? Yeah. Do we also get the configuration change history on the hosts? Like, who misconfigured <laughs> NTP? <laughs> is at some point it's been correctly configured and now yeah. not? Um, so, VR Ops doesn't know necessarily who made the configuration change. Log Insight would know, and Log Insight is integrated, it has integration with vRealize operation. Yeah, don't tell me I need to go to another console. We've already discussed. No, that. you don't, don't have to go to, go to another console. console. So you can forward, so if you have, an, if, if you have um, reason to uh, want to know who did a particular task, like who vMotioned or who changed the host configuration, you can set up a query in Log Insight to trap that type of information and that query can trigger an event. Uh, it'll forward that as an event to uh, VR Ops. Then VR Ops will have visibility, and you wouldn't have to go into the Log Insight piece unless you wanted to create a new query or do some further investigation on on the logs surrounding that. But okay, so yeah. your your answer to me is no, um, because <laughs> I then have to go and create a new query for every change action to out of you know, every action. No, I, I mean it doesn't have to be every change action. It's it, the the queries can use regular expressions and things like that to uh, you know look for you know uh, you can bundle all those changes into into one or you know a few queries basically. And we may actually even have those in Log Insight. If you look at, when you look at Log Insight, uh, there's, there's actually a lot of dashboards and queries that are already set up. Just that the, I've got a compliance tool here and I want to see my compliance history and, and a history of the yep. causes of non-compliance in, in a single place without having to, to do additional configuration. This yeah. is what I would want in, in compliance. Yeah, so the dashboards are available in Log Insight. The queries are there. If you wanted to have one console today to look at those, then I would just take those existing queries and just forward them to, as events to VRise operations. So then you could do correlations like this metric changed, this changed on the host. You know, so there's I'm some just correlation for compliance and, and reasons. You know, I'm, I'm not even interested in anything other than what's my compliance state okay. has caused my compliance state to change. Right. Okay. You can, you can, I know you're hearing no, but my lips are saying yes. <laughs> I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm holding the phone wrong again. Yeah, but that, no, but that's a, that, that is a good use case and certainly something, uh, again, I know our PMs are probably listening to this and uh, we're just in general with just like reporting and troubleshooting and compliance, uh, especially compliance, we're, we're really making a big push and in future releases, you'll see that continue to improve uh, greatly. Um, and uh, things like being able to understand when a change was made, who it was made by, and, and so forth. Yeah, absolutely. We want you to be able to one-stop shop, get that information. We don't like multiple consoles either. <laughs> I, I pretty much live in VR ops all day. So. Speaking of multiple consoles, again, going back to my um, question earlier that you know, Companies have different environments. So, mm -hmm. VRAS operations, obviously, tremendous product, looks after vCenter very uh, and the ecosystem very well. But again, people don't need different or want the different operations, need to be managed for AWS environments as well, like mm -hmm. Azure as well. So, are there any plans to you know, have not quite the same functionality, but have be, been able to manage operations? Is there anything on the roadmap because uh, f for that? Well, we can monitor those environments. Well, we can monitor AWS uh, today. We, Azure Management Pack is here or coming? It's here. Yeah, it's here. It's just released. But but you know, yeah. enhancing so, so giving giving it more status in the in the sense that you know you can do most of the things that are applicable to that environment. So okay, you won't be able to add host capacity, but 
or maybe I don't know, easy to instances, but you know, be oh, like re, like re, reclaim VMs that aren't doing exactly anything. Those yeah, kind of things. So okay, yeah, exactly the same kind of operations that you're doing for sure. the vCenter environment. Do them for AWS as well, for example. That's I think that's great feedback. I I think that's a kind of a, to me a logical progression of where we want to go. With, I mean, to be a cloud management platform, right? That's right. Uh, you need to be able to do those things. So uh, it's uh, I'm not talking roadmap here or anything, the general public's listening in, but <laughs> if you look at where we've come with this in terms of the SDDC capabilities, it kind of makes sense that we could apply some of that capability to hybrid and, and public cloud as well. Yeah, exactly. so point taken. So. It, goes, it goes back to what Vipu was saying at the beginning, that invisible clouds, right? We shouldn't care about Exactly, that. right, yeah. So we want to abstract all that and you're using you know, one pane to uh, manage those. With subtle differences, obviously, not all clouds operate the same. They have different tools on the back end, different APIs, and so forth, yeah.